Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Proper. Today we'll talk about a couple key points of my philosophy on survival radio or prepping radio. You guys who have been watching me for some time know that one, I'm a big fan of Morse code and second, I have a pet peeve and that's radio current draw. And I would like to explain why that is. I like to think of the worst possible situation. And for me, that would be evacuating on foot, uh, having to carry my gear on my back. If you can take care of uh, the worst possible situation, you can take care of any other situation. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not prepping for, you know, bugging in and having a, a more powerful and more complex systems. But I really uh, want to make sure that I have what it takes to operate in the field without any infrastructure, without any support and without any uh, grid power or complicated heavy gear. It doesn't mean it's not possible, of course, and you can go check out uh, Julian's channel, OH8STN, at Survival Tech Nord. He has a system uh, which works with a 100 watt radio that burns a lot of current and uh, you know, he uses a computer. So it is definitely possible. But I like to keep it simple and light. I also don't have any uh, means of transporting gear other than in a backpack. This is why I don't like my batteries to be <laughs> any bigger than these. Now this is uh, an 8 pack of AA cells, rechargeable, and uh, they charge up to about 1.37 uh, volts per cell, so you know, slightly more than 12 volts total. And here is a pack of three 18650 cells, which you can salvage from uh, old laptop computers. And same thing, those charge up to uh, a total of 12.6 uh, volts. Now they have quite a bit of capacity and you can find some cells that uh, go up to uh, 3.4 amp hour, 3400 milliamps. And that's quite a bit. These go up to probably, I think uh, 2000, maybe 2400, uh, or 1900s for these. But, you know, for a radio that doesn't draw a whole lot of current, and we're getting to that point, it's quite enough. I've used these batteries with my uh, Weber MTR, for instance, for a couple weeks at a time. I didn't have to recharge them. And that's a key point here. If you have radios that use very little current, you're going to be able to use very small batteries. And in a backpack, that's very important. I like radios that are very small, and this is the Weber MTR. It's a three band radio on 20, 30, and 40 meters, covers the whole band and outputs 5 watts. That's an awesome radio. And it doesn't cost that much, and uh, you can put it in your shirt pocket. It's really tiny. This draws about 35 milliamps on receive, and on transmit, I think it's around 700 milliamps, so less than an amp. When you compare that to radios that burn, you know, uh, one amp on receive and uh, five amp to make up uh, five watts, uh, you know, that's a big difference. And uh, of course, you don't have the, uh, the power of those radios. It's a little trickier to uh, get your signal out. You need very good antennas, but you can have a global range with this radio. Now you're going to say this is a Morse code only radio, and that is true but learning Morse code isn't that difficult. And you get a lot for your efforts. Now you can find, of course, voice modes radio that are small and portable, like the uh, QRP Ver, for instance, or the MFJ, uh, or some U-Kits also. The only radio that I uh, wish had a lower current draw is the FT817ND, because it's an awesome radio but it just draws a little bit too much current for my taste. Now, of course, I'm a little bit of an extremist when it comes to that, but I don't want any radio that draws more than, say, uh, 100 milliamps for uh, CW, or uh, 200 to 250 milliamps for uh, voice modes and digital. The reason being, of course, that we have to recharge our batteries, and this is what I use to do that. Now that's a Choitec uh, panel, 14 watts. It's fairly small, but it's not a very good quality panel. You know, it has the merit to be uh, cheap because I like cheap stuff. <laughs> but I really should have, uh, you know, one or two more because uh, one is none and two is one. 
but the Choi Tech works and it's a USB panel and I can charge my uh, 18650 cells with it. Now I used to charge my, uh, well try to charge my uh, AA cells but uh, the adapter that I had charged them up to 1.25 volts and that's just not enough. I had the Guide 10 that worked quite well but now it's probably at the bottom of the Atlantic so uh, you know I'm gonna have to get something else. For the 18650 cells, I use those uh, Nightcore UM10 chargers and those uh, can recharge a whole bunch of different cells but they work quite well for 18650s. And uh, it's a USB charger so uh, they plug in my solar panel. I also plan on making a battery pack using a cast aluminum case with a 18650 cell holder, Here, just, these are just the plugs, and an MPPT solar charger board and I will also be adding a uh, battery management system you know balanced BMS to uh, which I will put here to charge uh, those cells now this cost about $15 and the BMS is about $5 and it's cheap stuff from China but it does work now if you do need to make battery packs for more complex and uh, heavier current draw systems I highly suggest that again you go check out Julian's channel OH8STN at Survival Tech Nord. He's an expert on the subject. You can see here that the uh, Choi Tech uh, cheap Chinese panel has uh, two USB ports. And those two Nightcore UM10 chargers are USB chargers so let's plug them in. You can see here that uh, both cells are about 45%. So uh, we'll just leave them plugged in for some time and I'll finish this video and uh, we'll have a second look later. Make sure by the way that you angle your panel towards the sun because that's going to give you a whole lot more current. At this time I can only charge two cells at a time but I do plan on getting a second, well a third charger that can charge two cells at a time and I'll have a spare. With this system, of course, I can't charge cells while operating, but I really don't care because I carry a second set of batteries since they're so light. I'll probably have one or two weeks to charge those batteries, so if I do it a little bit at a time, that's not a problem. I really like this panel, anyway, small panels, because you can clip them to your backpack and carry them around. When I was hiking in the Pyrenees, I uh, used to charge my cell phone while hiking and that was a big advantage because, uh, you know, I was walking all day and when I got to camp at night, uh, <laughs> the sun was gone. Now, I do use heavier batteries sometimes, like the uh, Klansman batteries for my military radios. But my military radios are not radios that I want to carry around because they are just too heavy. But I like to have them for home use, you know, bugging in, for instance, or camp use. So I would like to have a way to uh, recharge those batteries uh, with a solar panel. So I do plan on using a bigger solar panel, it's not much bigger. I want to get the uh, Suaoki 12 volt 18 watt panel and that will be a good start. It's not a whole lot of power, but again, I'm not recharging huge batteries. I also have a 7 amp hour SLA battery, sealed lead acid, which I use for my uh, 2 meter ICOM radio. Again, not something I want to carry around, that's for home use or, you know, base camp use. But again, I do need to be able to recharge them, so I will use this panel with a uh, Genesis or Genesis charge controller. I had two when I uh, had my boat and uh, they work really well. I will have other uh, battery charging uh, videos because it's a very important subject but uh, this one is a good primer and uh, basically is my uh, base uh, system for uh, recharging my uh, radio batteries. So it's been about 10 minutes only and uh, one battery is at 47% and the other one is at 49%. Now it has been about 40 minutes and uh, one battery is at 66% and the other one 69%. Pretty good. So it does charge uh, quite nicely. Uh, there's no point in charging them full because uh, again uh, I'm not really worried about the time it takes to do so because uh, I wouldn't have to charge my batteries very often so now my way of doing things is not the only way to do things uh, my emphasis is on portability and simplicity 
There is also the cost factor because for prepping you need to spend a whole lot of money on a bunch of stuff. So I like to have simple, uh, cheap radios. Smaller, cheaper. My goal is to communicate, you know, gather information, exchange information. And I think my uh, minimalistic approach allows me to do so and uh, reach a broad range of people. This is where small Morse code radios really shine because they're tiny and they use very little current. I will of course uh, be experimenting with different ways of doing things on this channel but I wanted to show you guys the way I do things for myself. Now to the few guys who went to uh, patreon.com and signed up to help out this channel, you know who you are and you are awesome. Thank you very much, your subscription is helping a lot. Stay tuned for more videos on this subject and uh, have a good one.